On today's episode of Monday Maps, I'm going to be animating these tanks along this map without using any plugins. Today's video is sponsored by Envato Elements. Stick around to learn more about how you can bring your animations to life with elements from Envato. Okay, so for the first step, I'm going to grab a super sweet map to use as my base map. And I'm going to head over here to David Rumsey's map collection. And this is going to be a World War II style map um, showing like a tank moving across uh, the German countryside during World War II. So I'm gonna search the keyword Germany. What's really cool about this website is you can actually filter out all the maps by these different categories. And I'm gonna go down to when, scroll all the way down here. And then at the bottom, you can see World War I, World War II, and there's 169 entries. Wow, there's, a, there's like 500, almost 600 maps for World War I. And I really like this one, and I really like it because it's National Geographic. There's a little export button up here and you're gonna see all the different resolutions. I'm just gonna go with uh, extra large and I'm gonna bring this over here into Adobe After Effects and now I'm gonna create a new composition, standard HD, and then I'm gonna grab my map, bring it in here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna have a tank moving between two cities here and I'm gonna have it moving over here from Nuremberg, basically cruising down here to the river and there's a little town called Mooseburg. So the first step I wanna do here is I wanna add two null objects referencing these locations so that when I attach, when I start to animate and bring assets in, I wanna be able to attach them to these two locations. And this is a really busy map too, so I also just wanna be able to quickly reference where these locations are. So to do that, I'm just gonna to go to layer a new null object and then I'm going to call this Nuremberg and then I'll hit control D to duplicate it and I'll call this one Mooseberg. During World War II my grandfather was actually captured by the Germans in Italy and they brought him to this big POW camp in this little town called Mooseberg and he was liberated by General Patton who came with all of his tanks and came and liberated the camp. My grandfather has like cool letters explaining the experience of like what it was like and so I'm just kind of creating a map based on that story. So I'm gonna grab the Mooseberg one here. And the anchor point, if I turn off the map, you look, the anchor point of a null is at the top left. So I wanna make sure that anchor point is over the city here. So where'd it go? Here it is. So I want it to be right there. So there we go. Now I can grab Nuremberg and we'll bring that straight over Nuremberg right here. And you know what? I think I'm gonna bring the opacity of the map down because it's just way, 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 way too bright. Can't really see what's going on. And maybe I can change the label color of this now I'm gonna grab both of these null objects and I'm going to parent them to the map so that if I move my map around now, these locations are gonna stick. All of my visuals or all my animation is gonna take place right in here. I'm gonna go grab my anchor point. You can hit the Y key to grab this pan behind tool and you can, you know, I'm gonna put it like right here. So now if I scale, rotate, it's all gonna take place from the center. Now I'm gonna add some map markers to both of these locations. So I'm gonna to go to window and then open up effects and presets. And um, this year, I don't know if you saw the tutorial, but I got to create, I had an incredible opportunity to create animation presets for Adobe. I got to do 10 of their new animation presets, and one of them is a map marker. So if you search map marker, you're gonna find this right here, simple map marker. Make sure you don't have any layers selected in your timeline and then double click this, and it's gonna create this cool little ellipse that has a pinging stroke and it has all these customization options here. It's just a looping animation. So I'm gonna come over here and kind of configure this. So we'll scale it down to like 15, and then I'll turn the stroke width way down to something like three, and then we'll change the animation duration to four seconds. So now we have this slow kind of ping map marker here. I'm gonna rename it. I'll call this one Mooseberg Map Marker. And now I'm gonna grab the parent pick whip and I'm gonna hold shift as I release it over the Mooseberg null. And now you can see it's sticking right there. And now this is all connected. Even if I move the map once again, that map marker is gonna move. Now I'll duplicate this map marker and I'm gonna call this one Nuremberg and do the same thing. We got Nuremberg and then I'm gonna grab parent pick whip, hold shift, drop it over Nuremberg. Now we've got our little map with our map markers. Okay. Now I'm gonna go grab some actual assets and features that we can drop over our map, like the tank. We wanna we want to get a texture and start to really bring this together. Big shout out to my tier three patrons, Tyson, the Key Master, Mike and Sandra over on YouTube at Flumi Plus One, Barnes Creative Studios, Josh, and Crookie. Thanks folks for making this video possible.
All the elements I'm using today, I got from Envato Elements. They're actually today's sponsor. But you can find assets like these for free available on the internet. If you head over to like free SVG, I found a tank top view here and paper textures, you can find those all over the place. And for these explosion elements, um, Premium Beat actually has a free pack of those. I'll link to those down in the video description. But I went ahead and already downloaded all these assets here. So first, let's, uh, let's maybe add a texture to the map. So I've got this map. I'm gonna crank it back up here, and this is just looking really bad. So I'm gonna go grab this old paper texture that I got from Envato, and I will scale this down, and I'm gonna go search for the tent effect and drop that over the texture so it turns it grayscale. Then I'm gonna switch the blend mode to multiply. Yeah, we'll switch it to multiply. Okay, so right there we've got something looking pretty cool, and you know, I might wanna bring it down ever so slightly. You know, bring this down ever so slightly. And I think on the map, maybe I can apply an exposure, or no, hue and saturation. Let's go grab hue and saturation, drop that on the map. Then I can turn the saturation of this down maybe a little bit, and I can also bring the brightness of this down, something like this. And to bring this together a little bit, make it look a little nicer, I can switch the blend modes of the map markers. I'll switch those to overlay, so they kind of are a little bit more blended in here. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna go grab my tank top view. I've got the Sherman tank. I'm gonna drop this in here. Now it's way too big. So I'm gonna scale it down, scale it way, way down. Now I want to animate the position here. I want this tank to move between these two locations. And you know what, it's really not sticking out that much on this map. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna turn the map off just so we can see it. I'm gonna turn the texture off. So I've got this tank. I want it to animate from Nuremberg down to Mooseburg. So this is really simple. All I need to do is hit P to bring up position. I'm gonna bring my playhead to the beginning and just add a keyframe. And I'm gonna bring this tank over here and I'll hold control and it'll snap right over here to this position here. We don't have to be perfect. So now we have a position keyframe here. I move my playhead back over here to the end and I just grab this tank and I'm gonna hold control to snap again and I'm gonna snap it to this location and you see it adds another keyframe. So now we actually have an animation. Okay, so we have our base animation here of this moving, the position changes, but we wanna make it look nice. It's kinda of like sliding sideways. I'm gonna right click, go to transform, and there's a little button here called auto orient, and you can have it orient along the path. Click okay, now it's facing straight. This might not always be the case, depending on your asset, you might need to go hit R for rotation, and just rotate it around manually to make sure that it's facing in the right direction. I just got, I kind of got lucky with this one. Okay, so now our tank is actually moving forward. It's just, you know, going straight there. Maybe we want it to do, take some turns and stuff. So what we can do here is grab the Sherman tank and you can actually see the motion path here. And I can grab these keyframes. So I can actually move these position keyframes wherever I want them which is very cool. If you can't see the whole path, go to Edit Preferences, and I think it's under maybe Display, is it under Display? Yeah, and there's a section for Motion Path. I think it actually defaults to no more than five seconds, so you may need to switch it to all keyframes so that you can see you know, both the start and end keyframes and everything. What's cool about this is if I go and hit P and I grab Position, you'll notice these little circles here. And these are actually Bezier handles. So I can grab both of these and just start to move them around like this. Be careful not to grab the bounding box of the tank because then you're gonna go and you don't wanna do that. So just grab these and um, let's say we're gonna have our tank kind of cruising around like this. Like it takes a turn and then heads straight in. So now we see our tank leaving Nuremberg, heading around and then cruising on in for liberation. My next problem is, is that this tank is not popping out from the map that much. I need to draw the visual attention to this. So there's a few things and ways that I can do this. First, I'm gonna go add a, let's maybe add a levels effect. And if you look, you can see it's just very dark, so I can brighten this up. Okay, so that's brightened up a little bit. Now I wanna, it's still looking very flat, so I can add a drop shadow to it. So if I just grab a drop shadow and drop it on the tank, really crank, what I like to do is crank the distance out so you can see it and then bump up the softness to make it look more realistic and then you can change the position of it here. Now, let me show you what why this isn't the best method. So what you've got here is that this tank, it, it's looking better now. It's looking, you know, like it's looking more 3D, which is cool. But if I play back the animation, you'll notice that the shadow 
animates with the tank like it's rotating like if i come down here and rotate the tank watch the shadow the shadow is not realistic it's like rotating with a tank this has to do with render order the way the effects are rendered so the effects are rendered um, are basically rendered before the transformation properties so we don't want that so i'm going to delete this if you use layer styles instead if i go up to layer layer styles drop shadow these will be rendered after your transformation property so it'll it'll do the rotation first and then it will add the drop shadow let me just show you what i'm talking about here bump up the opacity and bump up the distance and then you know just like tweak this a little bit try to make it look as good as possible now with a layer style you're going to see that if i rotate this now that that shadow always looks like it's come that shadow is always going to be facing this way which is cool so this is what I want. All right, so I brightened it up, added a shadow. That looks pretty cool. You know, this shadow could definitely use some tweaking. It's just, it just needs a little bit more. Now to really bring attention, I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. And we're going to call this one Vignette. And I'm going to add, this is another preset that I created. It's called Noisy Vignette. And it's just essentially um, the vignette, the default CC vignette with a noise effect. So that that's already given it a little bit more here. But let me show you a really cool trick here. I'm gonna go down to effects in the timeline here, open up vignette, and I have this little center area here. This is like where the center of the vignette is gonna take place or where it's gonna be. I'm gonna, with this property selected, I'm gonna tap S twice to solo it. And then I'm gonna go to the tank and I'm gonna hit P for position. And now I'm going to property pick whip this to the position of the tank. And you know what, this isn't applying correctly. And you know why it's not applying correctly is because this is actually parented to another layer. So let's deselect that. And now if I property pick with this again, now this centers up here. And now that vignette is going to stick to here. And you can see the real subtle movements here with that light, which is cool. But if you want it to be super dramatic, just bring the angle of view way up and it's going to give you like this super dramatic look. And then it really brings attention to the tank. I mean, you can go pretty crazy with it. And it almost looks like a light like following the tank. Okay, I'm almost there. I pretty much have an animation, but I want to bring it to life by making the map move and make it look like I'm kind of flying in or zooming in on the map with some kind of camera. But I want to keep this in the 2D style. I don't want to make this 3D. So I think the best uh, way to do this is to simply pre-comp this and call this map animation final because anytime you name something final, nothing ever goes wrong. And now what I can do is simply bring up position, scale, and rotation of my pre-comp here, position, scale, rotation. I'll keyframe all these at the beginning, and then I'll go to the last keyframe, and let's say we wanna scale this up, uh, reposition it kind of over here, and then maybe rotate it a little bit. So let's see what this looks like. So now we're gonna have this movement like this. Okay, that's cool, I like this. Now I can see the edges of my composition here. To get around that, I can simply uh, collapse the transformations here and that's gonna show us through. But we still have some issues with this edge and I'm pretty sure that is just the adjustment layer of the vignette. So if I grab that, unlock it, and I think if I just change the parameters here of this, that should take care of it. Yes, it did. You just gotta be careful with this edge over here and make sure it's not there. And now this is pretty much it. We have an animation. And if I want to, you know, add anything else to it, let's say I want to come in here and just drop a couple of additional assets. Like I have this top view explosion. Let's say we want to put this over here, maybe right as the tank turns, we have this explode. I'm going to put it underneath uh, the vignette and then maybe scale it uh, way, way down. And then you can just, you know, you can keep customizing this. Like I could grab the tank and I could duplicate the tank. And then with these position parameters, I can just change the position like this. You know, have this start off from here and have it end on the other side. So you could have like a whole, a whole bunch of tanks here. Looks like our vignette is following this one now. So it's like it's surrounding the city here. And you know, you can do this as many times as you want. Thanks again Envato Elements for sponsoring this video. With a subscription to Envato Elements, you get access to over 56 million assets 
While it's nice to be able to create elements from scratch, that's not always the best method. And you can see here how quickly I created this animation using elements from Envato. This included this 3D tank, as well as the top view explosion, the paper texture, even the sound effects. Trying to search all these assets on free websites is very time intensive and not always very fun. Envato Elements offers a nice and clean, simple lifetime commercial license, which is good even after your subscription ends. Following the link in the video description is going to give you 50% off when you select an annual subscription, which will give you access to everything on the site for under $20 a month.